my sunroom chat. Today I will continue with my analysis of reflection and refraction. What I'm particularly interested in is the path of the photon as it traverses a dense medium such as glass and the path of the photon as it approaches the far side of the glass. Best theory tells us that the electric fields of a photon act as anchors when they enter a denser medium. The electric fields are created by elons. Any elons create the negative electric fields and p elons the positive electric fields. In one cycle the elons are directed down and in the next string cycle they are directed up. If the photon is traveling in a vacuum the elons cannot act as anchors and the photon travels in a straight line. However, when traveling in a denser medium such as glass, there will be a slight tendency to zigzag in flight. In this diagram, the n elons will cause the photon to turn a little to the right and the p elons to the left. For this reason, there will be a tendency for the photon to zigzag as it travels through glass. This will not be noticeable to the naked eye because even a red photon will zigzag over 5,000 times while traveling through a thin 2 millimeter thick pane of glass, and the deviation will be slight, something like 80 nanometers every 350 nanometers, perhaps something like this drawing. Now, although light may become synchronized when it enters a denser medium, such as a pane of glass, its string cycle may be in any state at the point it exits the glass, as shown in the next slide. A photon curves when it enters glass at an angle because its elons act as anchors. A photon travels close to a straight line while traveling through glass because the n elon anchors and p elon anchors pull in opposite directions. However, at the time the photon reaches the edge of the far side of the glass, the elons may be directed into the glass or out of the glass. I examined this situation in a simple experiment. I directed a red pen light against a pane of glass at an angle as shown in the next slide. When the red light from the black pointer pen struck the pane of glass at an angle, the light became split into three pathways that I could see with my naked eye. Some of the light passed through the glass. It is the refracted light that strikes the wall. This is shown in the illustration as light 1. Some of the light bounced off the surface of the glass. This light is reflected to the ceiling. This is shown in the illustration as light number 2. Some of the light enters the glass but turns around and comes out the front side of the glass. This is the diffuse light number 3 illustrated in pink on the slide. Now I would like to examine these three bands of light in a little bit more detail. In my previous sunroom chats, I explained what causes light to bend and enter the glass it strikes at an angle. In this case, the light enters the glass because its elons are directed into the glass at time of impact. This is a fairly precise moment in the two string cycles. The light that exits the glass also depends on the state of the string cycle. Refracted light number one on the wall was created when the elon anchors were directed back inside the glass at the moment when the photon reached the edge of the glass. In the next string cycle, the elons are directed away from the glass. They have little effect on the photon's flight. Now, <clears throat> the reflected light number two on the ceiling was created when the elons at the moment of impact were directed into the air, and this allowed the photon to glance off the surface of the glass. This leaves us with a diffuse light labeled number three that is spread over a large area in front of the pane of glass. This is examined in the next illustration. In this illustration, I have shown what the flight path of a photon might be when it nears the back side of the glass pane in the experiment. It is obvious that the elons waving in the air create no useful anchor points. However, those elons directed back into the glass act as anchors, and they reverse photon direction. 
This caused the number three light shown as pink in the experiment. Just why the light might be spread over a large area is shown in the next slide. Here I have shown that some of the original pen light is pulled back into the glass. From this point, the photons will continue to reverberate inside the glass pane until their string cycles favor their exit from the glass. This causes the creation of light 3 in the experiment that is spread over a large area. It is likely that some of the light came out the back side of the glass, but I did not detect it with my naked eye. There is one other point to be made. The distance an elon has to penetrate a denture medium to achieve full potential as an anchor is not known. However, for water, it might be more than a small drop of water that results in a poor rainbow and a large drop of water that creates good dispersion of light and an excellent rainbow. Thank you for attending my sunroom chat. In the next slide, I have summarized today's discussion and following this slide, I offer a thought for you to consider and the internet address for my website where you can read my book and examine all my movies in their logical order. You have a great day. Bye for now. The photons n elons and p elons act as anchors when injected into a denser medium. Elon anchors cause a photon to zigzag to a minor degree as the photon travels in a denser medium, such as glass. At the far side of a pane of glass, the elon anchors may be directed inside the glass or outside the glass. This dictates what happens to the photon. If the string cycle happens to send its elon anchors back into the glass at the right time, the photon will exit the glass and refract. Otherwise, elon anchors may prevent the photon from leaving the glass. Now the photon will exit the glass at some other point.